Welcome everybody. I am Bill Courtright and thank you for joining me today on this episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast, Living Right with Bill Courtright, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress management. Hello and welcome back to the Stress Mastery Podcast. Today is Tuesday and it's time for Health Huddles. I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing, Dave? I'm doing good. How you doing? I'm doing great. So this week, we're focused on career. And today, we're going to talk about performance. So since we are focusing on career, I will also talk today a little bit about wellness as a career. So yesterday, we were looking at some work statistics. And it was pretty amazing when you realize that 13 million working days are lost every year due to stress-related illness. And half of American workers stated they've gained weight at their current job. Too many birthdays, huh? I would not think it's half because I feel like everyone I talk to, I, I, I feel I like I only talk to the 50%. I, I think, they, I think they, they dumb it down for us. I'm not sure. So there's an obvious problem. There's an obvious problem in our society, and the problem is we do not have health as a core value. So you saw at the last event that Bruce and I did, right? I, I kind of set everybody up and we did the, the values and the belief exercises and everybody got their core values and that was on Saturday. And then on Sunday, you rocked we, their world. we <laughs> rocked their world because we got to understand that none of them, not a single person there had health as a core value. And I'm going to say this as I always say it, health is success. And the level of one's personal development at any given time will determine their success. And so when you go out and you're building your career and you're pushing and you're young and you don't think about your health, you can push your body to the limit and push and push and push. And you may even great get great financial gain. But in the end, I'm telling you, as you get older, the body's going to shut down, which means that your growth stops, your life stops, and you don't get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. And it's happening younger and younger every year because we talked about it yesterday. Work doesn't shut off anymore Yeah. because we carry work in our phone. I was just about to say, you're lucky if it catches up to you. While you're older, yes. I know people still, you're, now, you're it's, just reaching their 30s, mid 30s. I would say damn. the last 20 years, I've seen that shift. So we've spoken about stress and the stress response and being in the red or the green zone since we started the podcast, because that's really what we're about. The stress response is the physiological response. It's never shut off. The management of this particular response determines what part of the nervous system you have turned on, red or green. And this determines performance. Bottom line, your performance is determined by which part of the nervous system is turned on. Now, what do I mean by that? When the sympathetic is turned off and you're turned on and you're stuck in stress, you can perform, but you're performing off adrenal energy. You're pushing, you're forcing, you're driving, you're drinking coffee, you're drinking monsters, you're taking pills, you're doing whatever it takes to succeed. You're eating sugar, eating this, whatever it takes, right? You're pushing. But that's not real performance. When you're managing the stress response, not only is that the key for long-term health, but it's also the key to activate the part of the brain that allows you to deal with what's in front of you. You can never be present in the red zone. In other words, who lives in a red zone, Dave? Your ego. The ego lives in a red zone. So there's a lot of reactive uh, things happening out of the red zone. It's only reactive. It's the only reactive, <laughs> right? And so we talk about people looking to increase their energy, increase their spirituality, uh, manage the stress. Well, the management of stress begins with proper diet and exercise. I'm sorry, there's no other way. And if health is not a core value, health will not be a focus in your life until you are forced to deal with it. 
and hopefully it's not too late. <laughs> you know, I mean, when you're forced to deal with something, then health becomes a value. So careers, whether you're working for someone, you have a job, whether you're an entrepreneur or you're a professional, you cannot get away from the impact of stress on today's world. It's impossible because of the shift toward technology. And we, we read it yesterday again. We were reading those statistics and how many people skip vacations. How many people work on their vacations because their work is in their pocket. You know, emails are in their pocket. And so they never stop. So we talk a lot about here at Stress Mastery, one of the biggest things that we talk about is energy. Everything we talk about is energy, energy, energy. So we, when we understand, and it's so important to understand that everything is this vibrational energy that we talk about. When you're stuck in a red zone, you're stuck in the lower level one survival energies. Red zone, stress, survival energies. When you manage this response, you are up in the green zone and you are in what we call self and stress mastery energies. You're working out of a different vibration. So these vibrations are pretty important when we're working on our careers, right? If you're looking to grow in your career or you're going to school to get a career, these vibrations are important because we have to understand them. Because when we are working on our careers, our selves, our bodies, this energy is always at work. As I've told you many times, I have this need to understand how things work. I got this science, you know. Everything. Everything. <laughs> they, they, you know, I got to know the why, right? Why, why, why? It drives people crazy, but it's also the reason that I'm sitting here with you today and I'm doing this show, because I need to understand. And I wanted to really understand metabolism. And this led me to stress, which led me to the mind, which led me to my spiritual studies. And that is my progression of the last 30 years. Well, I want to take you guys on another little journey. There was a book written in 2001 called The Field. And it was written by Lynn McTaggart. And Lynn was an investigative journalist. She wasn't a scientist. She was investigating things. And the book that McTaggart was, in, was doing in this book and her investigation was on the human mind and body. And she wanted to investigate on how the mind and body are not separate from their environment. And she wanted, and what she found was that the body and mind were not only not separate from the environment, but they were a packet of pulsating power constantly interacting with this vast sea of energy. And this is the energies we talk about that shapes our world. Now, what I loved about this book, and this book was all about her finding science about this. And she went back in history and looking at science, hard science. And really, this book, there's, there's a part in the book um, on healing. And McTaggart brought together uh, the hard scientific data and this was hard data with controlled studies showing how prayer healed. And this scientific discoveries that she puts out and she describes, they're describing the unifying quantum physics that we've been talking about, the quantum me mechanics and the science of religion. Now, me personally, I started studying, you know, the body and the mind when I was early in my 20s got really heavy into the body. And then in the 1990s, mid 90s, I started studying Yogananda studies and got really heavy into the mind and energy of religion. Well, I guess that's what I'll call it. It's just understanding chakras, understanding the meridians, understanding the acupuncture systems. And I, and I was intrigued by this because there's a lot of science behind it. Well, and there's a one study in the book and it was a study with AIDS patients, and they did it back in the 80s, when basically, and I remember this because I started medicine then, AIDS was basically a death sentence. If you had AIDS, you were dying. And that's really, I'm not even joking, it was really bad. I can remember the first AIDS patient that I had to go in and, and do an examination on. They, had, they put me in like all this suit and clothes because they didn't know. 
It was a lot of ignorance. Like, God, I, I could just feel for the patient as I talk about it. I remember him sitting there, and I looked like I was like in a contamination thing. If you can imagine quarantine. the suits. Yeah, the quarantine. <laughs> exactly. That's the word I'm looking for. And I had to wear all this stuff. And just to go examine, give him a regular examination, right? Because nobody knew anything. You're really dating yourself right so now. So I, I am. I, I am. I, well, just look at my hair. My hair is dating me. So in one study with these AIDS patients, they separated two groups of patients. And each of these groups were matched. And so they were both they were both in the same level. They were both kind of considered um, no help. They were they were like people had kind of given up on them. They were all get they're both getting the same treatments and everything else. And what they did in these studies is they took half of them and this group was given healing energy, but from afar. And they got all these healers together. They got shamans. They got Christian prayers. They had Kabbalists, you know, Kabbalah energy. They had all these different energies going in there. And the scientists that were looking at this were going to see, was there a difference in the treatments of how the patients, it worked with the patients. And the group that was receiving the healing energy showed without a shadow of a doubt an incredible healing response. Their T cells started going up. Things that didn't make sense to the science world because this is not supposed to be happening. Now, in the book, I could do uh, two hours on the, that chapter alone in the book. There's all kinds of studies in there. So there's all these studies that she showed. And one of the doctors in there was a psychiatrist that was just skeptical. She was a Russian doctor. So did, in, in Russia, they were atheists then, mm -hmm. you know. And it was like, there's only science. There's no God, there's science. And they went in and they, they did such controlled studies that they proved, and I'm telling you people this, I'm telling you this, get the book if you don't believe me. Look for yourself. Again, everything I tell you, research it. Don't take my word for it. But these studies, and there are so many in this book, had proven that the healing vibration from a healer whether it be prayer or something like that, could heal somebody much more than just medicine. And so what does it show us? It shows us that everything is vibration. So you go to the doctor, right? You've got the, you you've heard of people, right? They went to a healer and they got better. They went to a, a, a naturalist, an alternative doctor, and they got better. And their medical doctor couldn't make them better. Was it because the medical doctor didn't know what he was doing? No. No. It was because his energy wasn't the same. So imagine you got the overworked doctor who's seeing like hundreds of patients just to, just to cover his nut because we know the business of medicine, right? And the overworked doctor who's just looking to have a lunch break and he's running in there and taking care of you. How do you think his vibrational energy is working on your illness? Yeah, he's, he's on the go. How about the uh, intern working with him? who's been working for three days and hasn't slept? How do you think his energy is working on you? How about the doctor who doesn't like the patient? <laughs> you know, we... I, I was going to say, I've well, seen it. Well, we've been around a lot of doctors, right? <laughs> if they don't like you, how well you think they're healing you? Because you see these healing people didn't have an opinion on the person. They were just told to pray a certain amount each day, and they were logging things in. And it was from afar. It wasn't even with the person around. They had a picture of the person in one study, and then they even took that away after a while, and it still happened. Come on, people. You could say what you want. You could say Bill's gone over the edge. I'm telling you, you guys want me to be, you want me to be raw and real. You told me that, David. Mm -hmm. Bill, be raw and real. You don't, you don't let yourself out. And you think I do, but a lot of times I don't. You know this is the stuff I believe. This is the stuff I believe because I've had my own experiences with it. So if you got a doctor who doesn't like you, I don't think he's going to heal you. How about the doctors that don't want to be doctors? How well are they going to heal you? So these studies are showing that energy matters. And we're talking today about career and performance. Guys, I am telling you, if you do not Take this message and run with it. You're doing yourself a huge disservice. Because if you do not have health as a core value, and you need to know your five core values, we're going to talk more about that tomorrow, if you really want to go out and change your career and find your vibrational push, 
of what you're supposed to do in your life, you got to know your core values. And if health is not one of those core values, I guarantee you, if you don't have health as a core value, you will not exercise regularly. The moment that it gets a little bit hard, you're not going to go in. Or if you got a little sniffle, you're not going to go in. Or if it's too busy, you're not going to go in. Or if, whatever, you'll make excuses right? And you're not going to eat correctly because you might be going on a diet and now moment that you get stressed out and you crave something, you're going to eat the cravings. Mm -hmm. Or you're not going to take the time to make your meals. You're not going to take the time to eat. How many people we know don't even take the time to eat? And if you don't have the diet dialed in, you can't manage stress. So if health is not a core value, now I'm very lucky because I got to be very fat and diabetic at a young age. So I lost my health at a young age. Thank you, God. Because my core value for health was in by the time I was 20 years old, and it still is the same value at 56. And it's the reason I'm driven to do what I do. And so I'm telling you, this message is probably one of the most important messages I ever put out. You have to understand that you're going to have to manage stress because you're not going to get rid of stress. And managing stress is not about meditation. That's a piece of it. Managing stress is about managing the stress response, and it starts with the first two steps. The first two steps of stress mastery, diet and exercise. And if we gotta have it as a core value, so performance, dealing with stress, creating wellness, aging, and even being, comes down to managing the stress response and the first two steps of stress mastery. So that's what I wanted to talk about today on performance, because if you guys got to really get that dialed in, especially as we're going into the holidays, we're going to talk a lot about this in the holidays, and going into the new year. One of the things you're going to see that I do with the climber community and I do with my coaching clients, we set goals in December. So we're going to start gearing towards setting up 2018, and we'll go into that, and I'll tell you guys how we do that and why we do that in the future episodes. But you got to understand this. You have to make this a value so you're willing to go to work. If you don't value your health, your health will fall apart. So this field that we talk about, wellness and a performance field, the wellness field is very dear to my heart, you know, and let's start with practitioner, wellness practitioners. These are doctors, dietitians, um, therapists, nutritionists, people that went to school um, to get into the health field the medical health field, okay? Let's say they want to get into wellness. What would be my, the first thing I would tell them is, go back to school. And we have some out there, Barbara, great doctor. She's in Washington, D.C. And she's 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 great doctor. She's been practicing for many years, but she wants to help people lose weight. She wants to help people master dieting. She wants wellness. So the first thing I told her is, gotta go back to school. You know why? They don't teach you wellness in school. You got to go out and learn it. You got to learn about hormones. You got to learn about uh, treatments. You got to learn how to look at blood work differently. It's something I would tell you that if you have this in your heart and you're a doctor, and we know many of them, many of them, Brian's one of them, Dr. Morales in, in Boca, uh, elite doctors were like that. They want to, Dr. Paz in Panama, these guys want to help people. They can't use what they learn in school to help people. It's the truth. And that, but it's okay. That's what it is. How about trainers? Trainers, group exercisers, physical therapy. I'm going to tell you guys this. If you guys don't get educated on proper diet and training and stress and how the body recuperates and how everybody's a little bit different, you guys will always be lost in the field. And one of the challenges as a career for this is keeping clients. And I'm going to tell you this. You never keep a client. If you're really a good trainer, your goal is to empower that client to be able to do it by themselves. That was always if you my do goal. that, yes, we do that. If you do that, then people will be lined up to come and see you. And coaching. If you're a coach, and that's why I like to see what's happening with JB Glosinger, a great coach, right? If you're a coach and you don't understand red zone, green zone, and you don't understand the wellness aspect of it, if you went and got a coaching certification, I'm going to tell you this. It's going to be pretty difficult to move your client to another level if they're stuck in a red zone. You need to learn this stuff. You need to study it. Go step outside your box just because you're a coach or, or a therapist. Anybody, 
You guys want to change people, you've got to put them in the green zone. And if that's a physiological response, you've got to understand it. Alternative teachers, yoga, Reiki, holistic, medicine, wonderful stuff. But don't discount medicine. Medicine is there for a reason. Learn to work with in the medical field with like-minded people and corporate wellness. Listen, one of the things that makes us different when we do, when I do a corporate wellness and I go into your company is I can look at hard data. You know what your hard data is? Your insurance expenditures. I can look at the average age of your group. I can look at the insurance expenditures. I can see what part is off. And I'm gonna tell you this, if you're doing corporate wellness, Again, you better understand stress because there is no right diet. There is no right exercise. You need to become more scientific in this and be able to analyze data where you can put people into the right program to manage stress, that's corporate wellness, and that will increase the bottom line Less sick days. We just looked at it, 13 million. You know, I mean, come on, less sick days, but also, we're going to be talking a lot tomorrow about performance as far as productivity, green zone productivity. That's where good ideas and problem solving comes. So those are all fields in the wellness career and industry. And so today's health huddle, I'm running a little short of time here, uh, the spotlight is adrenal health. Okay, so the spotlight's adrenal health, and we've talked about this in the past, so I don't have to spend too much time on this. But I figure we're talking about stress and performance. We might as well talk about adrenals. So the adrenals, understand, the adrenal glands are the most important when it comes to performance and health. And the reason I say that is because the stress response has never shut off. And anybody with thyroid that's energy. Thyroid is metabolism. Metabolism is energy. The thyroid and the adrenals are married. They will always be married. And so if the thyroid's not working, the adrenals will make up for it. If you don't manage the stress response, the adrenals will make up for it and the thyroid will shut down. That's why you gain weight. That's why stress causes weight gain. That's why everybody's gaining weight at work. <laughs> it's not because of the work. It's because they're not managing stress. So number one, there's four categories. Number one, Optimal adrenals. That means that everything's functioning right and you're managing it. Now, number two is insufficient adrenals. Now, in the blood work, I'm going to ask you to ask your doctor for AM cortisol and a fasting insulin. Just try to get those two tests. If they'll give you those two tests, you can kind of see what's going on with you. And it's just a snapshot. There's much more advanced testing for people out there that have more, you know, education. But I'm going to tell you, this is something simple that you could maybe get your doctor to buy into. And it tells you a lot. So if you have insufficient adrenals, the cortisol levels will be high in the morning, which means they should be around 18. They'll be over 18. Or they may be a little bit low. They may be at 13, 14. 18 is optimal. And then the insulin will be high or normal. Normal insulin, fast insulin, you want a five to six. That's what you're looking for. So that's insufficient adrenals. It just means you're not quite managing stress or maybe you don't have the right diet or maybe you're over-exercising or it's the wrong exercise or something off. It's just not, it's not perfect. Mm -hmm. And you want optimal. Number three, adrenal fatigue. A lot of people have this. Cortisol will now be on the low side. The low side means it will be below 10 usually 8, 9, 10, you're seeing it low, it's 10 or below, and the insulin will either be high, body's not processing carbohydrates currently, or very low, and you'll usually have an elevated A1C, so you can ask for that test also, which measures the blood sugar over um, a 12-week period, and high A1C is anything over 5.7, it's not, I usually it's go not, 5.5, we don't, yeah, over. well, 5, 6, well, 5, 7 is considered high medically, but you're not close to being a diabetic, no, yeah. but we're not looking for disease. That's not our job. The doctor's job is to diagnose disease. We're looking at, should you have more protein? Do you need to eat more? <laughs> That's what we're looking at, right? And then number four is adrenal burnout. When you have adrenal burnout, you'll usually have some type of disease. You can have autoimmune disease. You'll have pain, probably aches and pains in your body. Um, you'll have a very low cortisol, usually five or lower. Um, and then insulin will be very low usually, um, unless you catch it and it's a high, but it's usually going to be actually be low. And the AMC will be elevated. And uh, yeah, it will be up. That's for sure. It'll be over six. 
for yeah. sure. You'll be a, considered a pre-diabetic or you're a diabetic or something like that. And that, that. could be your, your disease that you'll be it. looking for. It's, yeah. that, and it's not our job, yeah. right? So that's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in the planet. And you can all join us by simply looking at those buttons below this show. And you can like, share, and subscribe. As always, until next time, stay inspired.